Welcome to my Next.js course. Next.js is a React-based web application framework that enforces an application structure and provides the most important features needed to develop a modern web app. In this course, I'll talk about Next.js from scratch, assuming you have no prior knowledge of the framework, and I'll attempt to cover the most important features in detail. As I mentioned, Next.js is based on React. Therefore, a good knowledge of the fundamentals of React is a prerequisite to this course. If you want to learn React, you can check out my Introduction to React course. React is unopinionated about the architecture of your application, but Next.js is a complete web app framework, and as such, it defines a stricter project structure. Before we dive into specifics about project structure, I want to mention a very important note here. Next.js version 13 was recently introduced and it includes a new way to structure your application. Next.js 13 changes the concept of the framework because it's largely based on the newly introduced React server components. We'll talk in detail about that, but first I want to show you the old structure that was used prior to version 13. In this course, we'll focus on the features introduced in the latest release, but I want you to have a brief idea of what came before it. Prior to Next.js 13, all of the views were contained in a Pages folder. This folder contains React components in a folder structure. The folders define the routes of the application, and the components are individual pages. The Pages folder and this structure is still supported, and there are no plans to deprecate it soon. The main feature of Next.js has always been that it supports different kinds of rendering, client-side, server-side rendering, and static-side generation. Client-side rendering means that the entire user interface is built in the client's browser, and the page the client receives from the server in most cases is a blank page with a single wrapper diff. With server-side rendering, the React code which builds the UI is executed on the server, and the client receives a constructed page. As pages are usually interactive and need some JavaScript on the client for interactivity, there is usually what is called a hydration phase with server-side rendering where some client-side JavaScript is also run on the page. Static site generation pre-builds static pages from the React views during the build phase, which can then be served with the static file server. Static pages load faster as the UI is pre-built and they take the least amount of server and client resources, but they are only suitable if the data displayed on the page is static as well, because it will only update when you build the application. Prior to Next.js 13, you could control how each page in the pages folder was rendered. You could have static pages and server-side rendered pages. The server-side rendered pages were also automatically hydrated if you had event listeners, effects, or other client-dependent code in them. With Next.js 13, rendering is now not controlled at the page level, but at the component level. You have server-side components and client-side components. The new version introduced the new app folder which similarly to pages defines the routing structure with folders. Each folder contains React components in files that define the UI of the routes. All components in the app folder are React server-side components by default. And if you need client-side interactivity in a component, you can specify the specific component as a client-side component using a directive. Previously, rendering was controlled on the page level. You can now render most of your pages on the server and sent only a small amount of client-side JavaScript for a few interactive components. This gives the developer more granular control over rendering, which means you can make more performant applications with better UX. I have so far I focused mainly on the rendering capabilities of Next because I think they are its killer feature, but it also has many other optimizations and features. One of those is the router. The router is server-centric, but it also works client-side. This means that when a user navigates to a different page, the browser will not reload and Next will only render the differences. As the user navigates around the app, the router will store the rendered server-side components in a client-side cache for even better performance. There are many other optimizations that happen with no effort from the developer. Two examples of these are images and fonts. Next.js has modules that optimize and serve images and fonts in the views in the most performant way. But we'll explore these as we go along in the course. Now, let's create a Next.js project. You can use an npm CLI called create next app to create a Next.js app quickly. Open a terminal and use npx create next app. 
This will enable the new app folder, which is still considered a better feature at the time when I'm making this video. Lastly, I'll specify a folder name for my project. I'll call it Next.js app. I get a prompt asking me if I would like to use TypeScript. I'll decline TypeScript for this tutorial and I would like to use ESLint. The CLI created my project and I can now open it in VS Code. Let's take a look at the file structure now. The package JSON includes basic scripts for developing, building, starting the app, and linting. We do have a next config file which currently only sets the app dir option to true. This enables the new app directory. At some point in the future, this option will most likely be unnecessary. We also have a public folder which serves static files. In the newly generated project, it has a few SVG graphics and a fav icon. The app folder includes a page JSX file. The file named page is the view definition for each route or folder. In this case, this is the root page file, which will essentially be the home page. As you see, it does include a few paragraphs of text and images. If we start the application with npm run dev, we will see that content rendered. As you can see, we also have some styles for this page in a page module CSS file. We will talk in detail about styling in Next.js, but you should know for now that this is a CSS module used only by this specific page. Notice that we have a couple of other files in the root. They are specialty files. Layout defines a layout that is reused on all routes under the current one. This means that this layout component will be site-wide as it is in the root. As you can see, this is why it only includes the HTML and body tags. It also includes a global CSS file which has some global styles. The head JSX file is also a specialty file which overrides the content of the page head tag for the current route and all routes underneath it. There are other specialty files which we will explore in the next episode, but here's what we have right now, a layout component and a page component, and a head component overriding the head tags in the layout component. All of these are server-side components because they are not specifically declared as client-side, and there's no need as they're not interactive. In the end, they come together as a single page. Notice that even though I use the app folder, we still have the legacy pages folder. If you open it, you'll see the API folder. The API folder contains server-side API endpoints, which you can use to write a REST API here. With these API endpoints, Next.js becomes essentially a full-stack framework. We won't focus on them just yet. Let's now create a new route. As I mentioned, routes are defined by the folder structure. I want my route to be hello, so I'll create a new hello folder in the app directory. I also need a page JSX file in it to describe the UI of my new route. This page file has to contain a React component. And for this first page, I just want to render an H1. If I open the new route now, you'll see it renders my component correctly. If we view source, you can see that my component was actually rendered server-side. Notice also that my head tags are the ones defined in the root head file. If I want different head tags in this route, I can just create a new head JSX file which exports a head component. As you can see, my page title is now different. With this, we'll wrap the first video. You now have a very basic understanding about what Next.js is, you know how to set up a Next.js project, and you can even make a simple page. In the next video, we'll talk in depth about routing, layouts, and pages. If you're not subscribed already, do so in order to receive updates when the next videos in this series are released. Take care.